Hallelujah, we're back. All right. Okay, so our first scripture is like an arrow, turn back the arrow. All right, so our first Bible scripture is Deuteronomy 3. Was provoked me to jealousy by what is not God. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols. But I'll provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. Verse 22. For the fire, for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. I will keep disasters on them. I will spend my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger, devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. I will also send against them the teeth of beasts with the poison of serpents of the dust. And they said, um, he's talking about revelation even here. He's showing the spirit, um, the pestilence, the famine. Um, remember, he said the locusts they had the power of the scorpions, sting men, and they could not die, and death would flee from them. Um, these are judgments coming on witness, okay? The sword shall destroy outside, and there shall be terror within for the young man and the virgin and a nursing child with the, to, with the man of gray hairs, okay? I would have said I would dash them to pieces. I would make a memory of them to cease from among men. Had I not prayed the wrath of the enemy, least their adversary should misunderstand. Is it not the Lord who has done this? God is saying, He is going to punish the wicked. That is a God deal because they refuse to repent. But God is saying, if He should make a total end of Israel, because Israel is called to shout forth His praises and they're backsliding, and Israel does not mean just the land. Israel. Israel means those spiritually born by the water and the spirit. And God is saying, if they don't turn back, I'm bringing their enemies against them. I'm allowing it. Because those whom I love, I will chastise. I will rebuke. But he said, and disaster will come upon them because they do not turn from evil. They just turn to evil. They turn to idols. They bring to idols, knowing who is the maker of heaven and earth. And God says here, had I not feared the wrath of the enemy, the enemy now, if he should destroy all of them who are backsliding, all of them who are turning to evil, all of them who are um, committing abominations in sight, then the enemy of the people will turn around and say, the Lord is in their favor. And the enemy is not a consecrated people. The enemy is blind. Okay? Um, that's right. Tell somebody we have a blind adversary. <laughs> they can blind. They can't see. Um, but God is saying, um, if, okay, Let's read in verse 28 of Deuteronomy 32. If they are a nation void of counsel, no, is there any understanding in them? Who gives us understanding and counsel and wisdom and knowledge? Who? Holy Spirit. Amen? And they are, they are void of counsel. They're missing it because they have not sought God in spirit and truth. They use them for what they can get. And then they backslide into their thing. So they're like, you know, it's like when 
um, he showed me in the wilderness where where he delivered them out of Egypt. And they turned around and they said, oh, that we had the onions and the garlic and the, the meat and the, the sweet water and whatever to, in Egypt. They were blind to see that they were delivered from slavery, from centuries of slavery. And they were now cursing God who brought them out of Egypt. Okay? So there's an the ungratefulness, but there's also a blindness. Because the Bible says that the enemy of this world has what he's blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. Okay? So our enemies are blind as well. I want you to know that. Um, okay, and verse 29. Oh, that they were wise. That they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. What did you just say? Their latter end. You see, God is talking about the revelation of the church. If you don't turn back, you can't be lukewarm and you can't be evil. You can't be saying scripture is partial and this scripture works with this Bible and that scripture, um, this, this book will keep the Bible and that with this. You can't mix up God. God is not a God of confusion, but a God of order. He's on an order of confusion. Um, and he said, how can one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them? So they're winning the battles and they begin to exalt themselves and say, well, they could do it on their own. You know, their pride God hates. He hates pride. He hates it. He doesn't like it. So um, they have continued in evil. They've continued in wickedness. They've continued in adultery. Adultery. They've continued in adultery. They've continued in um, um, uh, perversion. Okay. If we read just one verse before verse 21 of Deuteronomy 32, it says, And he said, God is speaking, okay? I will hide my face from them. I will see that their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, children in whom there is no faith. Remember God says, An evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. Remember Jesus said, Will I find faith on the earth when I come? Okay, sad but true. So then the Holy Spirit had to go to uh, Ezekiel 9, 8. Where did Ezekiel 9? Ezekiel, where are you? Right here. There we go. Ezekiel 9, 8, and we're reading from, hmm, we're reading from verse 7. Take it and count. Oh, let's read verse 8 first, and then we'll read from verse 4 to 11, okay? Um, Ezekiel 9, 8. So it was that while they were killing them, I was left alone, and I fell on my face and I cried out. And said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in, pouting, in pouring out your anger, your fury on Jerusalem? See, now who's this? Who's crying out? This is like Abraham. This is like, um, this is like, um, the voice crying out in the wilderness. This is like people who intercede. This is like the prophets, the voice of the watchmen. They're begging God to have mercy, okay? Um, because his wrath is, is real. God's anger is real. And people, yes, he is a God of compassion. He is a God of love, gentleness, loving kindness, long patience, um, patience, long suffering. He is all of those things. God is good. But God has an end point where he says, enough is enough. Okay, and we read, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnants of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? 
And he said to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. It's exceedingly great. And the land is full of bloodshed. The city full of perversity. For they say the Lord has forsaken the land. And the Lord does not see. Um, verse 10. And as for me also, my eye will neither spear, nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own heads. What did God just say? Hmm. He's going to repay. Then he said, my eyes are in every place. There is nothing hidden from me. What is done in the dark, what is done in the light, I am in every place at once. He's omission, omnipresent, okay? Um, and he's saying, um, right, he says, all, all, what is it, what, how does he say, all our deeds will be brought into the light at judgment, and man will give account of every deed that he has done or every action which is right now, okay? Every idle word. Ecclesiastes, but it's only Ecclesiastes. Okay, but we see that Romans 4, verse 12, and it says, from verse 11, it is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, and every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. And it says, therefore, let's stop judging one another. Instead, make up your mind to not put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, reading from verse 9, and it says, For so we aspire to please him, whether we are here in this body or away from it, okay? We know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So, Second Corinthians five ten. So we aspire to please Him, God, whether we are here in this body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive his due or his reward for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. Therefore, since we know what it means to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is clear to God, and I hope it's clear to your conscience as well. In Job 34:11, he says, For he pays a man according to his work, and makes him find it according to his way. Now, taking that in context, we read from verse 10 to 12, Job 34. Therefore, Listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do wickedness, and from the Almighty to do wrong. For he pays a man according to his work, and makes him find it according to his way. Surely God will not act wickedly, and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Mm, that's a word I hear. Uh, Matthew, we're reading Matthew 16, verse 26 to 28. Um, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul, or loses his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in his Father's glory with his angels, hallelujah. And then he will repay each one according to what he has done. Truly, I tell you, 
Some who are standing here will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In Psalms 62 12, we're reading from verse 11. Once God has spoken, and twice I've heard this that power belongs to God, and loving kindness is yours, O Lord, for you recompense a man according to his work. Okay, so God. Because uh, he will repent. He is coming back. He says, Behold, I'm even at the door, and I'll, I'm bringing rewards. What is that? When he said, I'm bringing rewards to each man according to what he's done, and I will give rewards. Revelation. 22.12 says, let the right, let the unrighteous continue to be unrighteous, and the wicked continue to be wicked. Let the righteous continue to practice righteousness, and the holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to each person according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, so God is saying here in Ezekiel 9, 10, we come back. As for me also, my eye will not appear, because I am the Almighty God. I am in every place. I am judging wicked and good, and I will surely give what a man deserves, okay? He says, I will, no I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own heads. And just then, the man who with the linen, what did he say the bride is wearing? The righteousness of the saints are like linen. The righteousness of the saints is a holy man. And he said, I have done as you have Now God is showing you that this is a prophet even that went about proclaiming judgment this time. Like how Jonah was sent to the Nineveh. Okay? And Jonah said, if you don't repent, the wrath of God is coming upon you. That is it. That is just a great old bad man, it's alright. And um right. Um God is saying the wicked will be a stubble or ashes. Every time I see a dirty, like a, you know, like a picture of a lamb that that the fleece is not white, but it's um it's like brown or a little dingy. I think of rolling with ashes. Um, that was just revelation that makes me smile. Proverbs four nineteen. And it says from verse 18 to 20. But the path of the righteous is like the light of the dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. The wicked of the wicked, the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your aid to my sins. Verse 40 says, um, come out of her, my people. Um, in Proverbs, in Proverbs 24, from verse 15 to 17, do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not destroy his dwelling, his resting place. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in the time of calamity. What did God say? So a righteous man can't stumble, okay? But the wicked, when they stumble, they don't get up. He said in verse 17, Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Because we also have a heart like Abba. 
Remember, he desires nobody to pay for him or to come on his repentance. And here's what he said. If you rejoice when your enemy stumbles, then the Lord will see it and be displeased and turn his anger away from your enemy. Do not fret about evildoers or be envious of the wicked. We know that. But there will be no future for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. So do you see that? If you rejoice when your enemy stumbles, you must still need to obey that's not the case. So need to, um, God is saying, God is saying, um, if you exalt yourself when you're in it, if you say, you know, it's good for you, you deserve that, or that should happen to you, and this, that, and the other, and you become practiced in this, your enemy is about to, they're going to feel hurt at some point, but not just hurt, they're going to be angry, they're going to cry out for God to intervene, saying, oh, this is your son, this is your daughter, but look how they treat me, look how they, and that is his anger will be turned away from you. Don't want that. Okay. Um, we're reading the wicked will be able to study, right? This is what we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for the, um, just a second, a scripture. Okay. Is it in Oh, Alex of the Peace? I'm going to the of the righteous. Stubble. Stumble. Stubble. There we go. It's in Malachi. That's exactly what it's really saying. Four. We're reading from verse four, two to four. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from a stall. You will tread down the wicked. For they will be like ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I am preparing to the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, even the statutes and the ordinances which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Alright? God is saying that there's coming a day of reckoning. And even here, he's saying, you know, they're there. Um, the people are crying out for redemption. Remember when he says, look up your redemption to right? Um He's saying that the righteous, they feel afflicted, they feel pressed down, but not crushed. Excuse me, at first, we'll go there just now. But um, he said, listen, these arrows right now that he's showing here, it's a shock that is coming. It's like a... Uh, it's like something has caught the attention of a hunter. Lord, here's what I'm saying. Ah, something has caught the attention of a hunter. And he positions the bow and he aims and he releases, okay? An arrow is coming. An arrow of judgment. An arrow that is straight and precise. An arrow that cannot be turned back unless it be for the mercy of God. Why did I say hunter? And then he showed me Orion. Um, okay, he's saying even so, because of the abominations done in the earth, the Antichrist is being allowed to have that hour. He said an hour was given to the false prophet, the beast, and the Antichrist. And, um, the, the hunter Orion represents the Antichrist because a hunter does what? Kills, okay? A hunter kills, goes and kills. And 
He said, for all the wickedness that is upon the earth, many will perish. Okay, many, many will perish. But God has a remnant. And this is who he's called. He's speaking to you. If you're lukewarm, he's speaking to you. If you're not following the Lord, he's speaking to you. If you want to know Jesus, he's speaking to you. If you want to flee from that hour, he's speaking to you. He's saying, come away, because I will surely recompense their deeds. Remember we were doing the days of Paul, and um, that was one of the things, recompense, reconciliation, repentance, repentance, recompense, reconciliation, yeah. So God is saying, listen, and now the man with the ink horn, the man filled with linen, is the righteousness of the saints. The man filled with linen is actually like the bride, okay? Um, who has the ink horn? What's an ink horn? I believe it's the show part of the thing that you blow. And he said, I've done as you commanded me. God showing even the connection with the trumpets that are to be blown in Revelation. All right. Um, we're going to stop here and then we're going to go to the other arrow first. Where is it? Okay. In Job six four. Job six four, we're reading from verse three. From verse three to five. Okay. And it says, For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks in their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when it has grass, or the ox loop? Or la, or the lock, the ox la over its fodder. Here's what he's saying. Wow, this is revelation. Get ready. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um. Will you fast when the bridegroom is with you? No, you'll fast when he's away from. You. Right now, he's away from us. He's in us, but he hasn't come yet to receive the bride. Okay. So. Wow. If you like, let's just read it again. Um, the hours of the Almighty are within me. The wrath of God, the fear of God is piercing me. Okay? Because a righteous man is speaking. Job was a righteous man. And he says, the arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks in their poison. What is he saying about poison? It is killing everything that he is. That he knows himself to be. He is dying to self completely. That the wrath of God may be turned away. Okay? Um, they said, My spirit drinks in the poison. His spirit, if he was haughty, if he was prideful in any way at all, be it that he did not know, he said, The arrows of the Almighty are within me. So, guess what? God has pierced him. He has pierced both his mind and his heart. Okay? Um, and he says, My spirit drinks in their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. What did I just say? Is the fear of the Lord is upon him. He knows that God is holy. He knows that God wants us to be holy. And he's saying, Lord, if I have it anyway, during my walk with you, okay, he's saying, if I've in any way trespassed against you, if I've in any way exalted self above you, if I've in any way stepped on your toes, Father of God, I just, I repent of it. He said, does the wild donkey break when it has grass? No. So God is saying, all of us, not some, all of us, Need food. 
We need him, the bread of life. We need him, the living water. All of us need food. And he said, does the wild donkey break when it has grass? No. The fields are open and wide. They're, it's going to feed like, for as long as it wants. Or does the ox low over its father? No. Because they're feeding. Okay? So Job is saying now, he's speaking in himself. He's speaking in himself and he's speaking to God. He's saying this. If I am thirsty, fill me up. If I am hungry, fill me up. Because I hunger for you and I thirst for you. Okay, so he's saying, when I had everything, I, I did not cry out. Maybe I didn't cry out as much. Because he said, does the wild donkey bray? When a donkey brays, it really makes a lot of noise, okay? It really, man, they are some stubborn creatures. And he said, it will bray when it doesn't have the grass. When it, a, don a wild donkey is a mule, isn't it? So, anyway, let's not get into that. But um, the grass is always a field. So, there's a lot of provision, okay? And Job was wondering in himself if he had, because if he had everything, did he not cry out enough? Did he not surrender enough? Job is wondering if he should, if if God has taken away what he had, that he could have God in entirety if he missed something and God has taken away what he had that he would cry out. So let's go on to read. Um, and it says, does the ox plow over the fence of the fire? When an ox is given food, um, it eats, okay? But if you don't feed it, obviously, come on, if you don't feed an animal, then it will make noise. And verse 6, can flavorless, flavorless food be eaten without salt? What are we talking about? Remember, Jesus is the bread of life and the water, the living water. And I'm then he said, what good is salt when it's lost its flavor that to be thrown out and thrown underfoot? And who are who 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 is the salt of the earth? We are. Let's just write that. movie. Salt of the Earth movie. Now, we're looking at Matthew 5, verse 13 16. Uh, well, he compares some really odd things, you know, if you're going to read. Like, let's read in um, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Yea, a salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its its flavor or its savor, where shall it be salted? It is then for it's good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Ye are light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but, under, but on a candlestick that it gives light to in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So what is the globe? <laughs> Sorry, Job is crying out. Father, if I have not been the soul, if I have not glorified you the way that you to me to. Then he's, let's read in Job 6. He said, Can flavorous, flavorless food be eaten without the soul? He knows that he needs God in this life. He knows that there's something, something, something that, that he needs, okay? And he says, or is there any taste in the white of an egg? White of an egg. Yeah, white of an egg has no taste, unless we have no salt to it. Um, my soul refuses to touch them. 
they are loads some truth to me. So he's, he's crying out in some God. He said, I have partook of everything that I thought was sold. And everything that was not sold to has not been a part of me. And he says, Wow. Oh, that I might have my request that God would grant to me the thing that I long for. That it would please God to crush me. That he would lose his hand and cut me off. He is so, Job is at the point of, it's not depression, or it is depression. I don't know what to call that, okay? But Job is at a point of saying, hey, I've given everything. I have done the best that I know how. I have served you with. Love, I have partook of what you said to partake of. Job is saying, Lord, what else? And now he was just begging God to take his life. Job has become suicidal because he's begging God to take his life. He said, Oh, that I would please God to crush me, that he would lose his hand and cut me off. Job was begging to die. He said that then I would still have comfort. Though in anguish, I would exult. He will not despair, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. So he's saying, Lord, I've shared you. I've been that. I've partook of what was salted, what was flavorful, what was tasted to you. I have, um, right, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. He's always sharing whatever God gives. He's always, he's always pressing in, okay? He's saying, what strength do I have that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? He doesn't know. He says, if I've been serving, if I've been serving the Lord with all that I have, if I've been giving all that I have, and I have to endure this, then he's like, well, what else do I do? So he's confused and he's like, he's, he's still struggling for every ounce of strength, but he's like, I don't know what else to do because I've given my best, okay? And he says, is my strength, in verse 12, is my strength the strength of stone or is my flesh bronze? Is my help not with me? Greater is he that is inside of us than he who is outside. Is success driven from me? So he's asking, did God turn away from him? Is there a reason? Father, reveal that reason. He wants to know. So the arrows of the Lord are piercing him on the inside. And it is a fear of God, because Job had a fear of God. He said, have you considered my servant Job? When Satan came out and said, I've been wondering on the earth, whatever, and um, God says, have you considered my servant Job? He's, he's blameless. Job, there's no there's no much of peace like, you know, he's top notch, righteous guy. But yet Job went through this, and God is saying, um, this is even for the church, because he said, the woman gave birth to the male child. And the male child is Christ. The church is birthing through the Holy Spirit. It is so total, it is married, we are married to Jesus. Get that in your head. We are married to the maker of heaven and earth. And he is the head we are under him. We are to be submitted to Christ. Okay? And God is saying, um, what's it going to be saying this? The Bible reveals God's plan for mankind from beginning to end. What is this? When we examine the scriptures, we see that God has a near plan yes, for mankind. Plan. God sets a pattern in Genesis. Sorry. So, wow. I'm talking about the end times and the rapture starts to play. 
Okay. So God is saying, um, oh, Holy Spirit, right? He's saying the woman brings forth the child, and she says she's in birth pains. Okay, she is the righteous church. She is the church that is led by the Holy Spirit. She is the church submitted to Christ. And he's saying that she brings for the child with pain. It's not easy. And we're not. We're take your mind off the childbirth for a while and just look at this. The world is in sin. The world is a dark place. Growing up, we were never taught that. We were taught to we were taught to embrace the the media and its nonsense and this and that and the other and every movie and every sitcom and every this and every that and now we realize this what? It's all rubbish. They were trying to brainwash us that we will not seek our creator. And the righteous are not they're not off the world. They're in the world, but they're not off the world. Okay? And the spirit of truth that resides in is hated. I cannot emphasize on this enough, and Holy Spirit will not let it go. Okay? And the woman, the church, is bringing forth child with birth pains. The woman, the church, is manifesting the Holy Spirit, fruits of the Spirit, um, being led by Christ, walking in the ways of God, being led by Scripture, um, allowing allowing things to line up, okay? Following God's order. The, the church is preparing herself for the coming of the room. But she is bringing forth in pain because she's hated. She's just hated. And like Job here, Job is righteous. And guess who hates him? Satan. Satan sees a prospering man or prospering woman in the Lord. Okay, I'm not saying that you're in the world and you're prospering. That's a whole lot of prosperity that we don't want to be a part of. Oh, we're talking about someone walking upright in God and God's blessing. The devil does not like us when we're blessed. He wants us in a place of fear, failure, hopelessness, darkness, sadness. That's where Satan wants us. And, um, my, I tell you. I can't emphasize how much. The Bible says we're pressed down but not crushed. Let's find that. Um, and we have First Corinthians four eight. There's a bunch of keys. Wow. Two goes into four twice, and four goes into eight twice. Two, two, two. Wow. Second Corinthians four eight. Oh no, I just said that on video. Second Corinthians four eight. Now we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this surpassingly great power. That is from God, not not us, okay? Because it's Christ at work in us, amen? We are pressed down on all sides, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. This is how the church is going to be. It's not going to be an easy thing. Not going to be an easy thing, and it goes on to read in verse 10. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may, may be revealed in our body. And the life of Jesus is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit rose him from the grave. Amen. 
He's the sovereign spirit of God. His name is God. He can do what he wants. He said, I'll lead on my life because I can take it up again. So, okay. He has power over grave and hell. Amen. So let's go into another arrow scripture. Um, I see Psalms 11. Reading from verse 1. Oh, oh, sorry. Psalms 11, verse 1. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. What was I just saying? Didn't I say that we are hated for righteousness, that Satan hates us with a passion? God confirms it in his word. Right there. And verse 2, For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow. On the string. Remember, I said it was like Orion the Hunter. But this is the last day of Revelation. The Antichrist is a hunter. Um, and guess what he's hunting for? The righteous. He hates the worshippers. He hates the prophesiers, the, the ones who says, Hey, the testimony of Jesus Christ is real. Jesus is telling you this, that you will know it is him. He hates them with a passion. He hates the saints of God. He hates those who are following on the righteous path. He hates those who are keeping the commandments. And guess what? Just like Holy Spirit was in the body of Jesus, and he is God in the flesh, Satan is in the body of the Antichrist. And he is the devil in the flesh. Okay, so something to think about and pray about. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Psalms 11, 2. For look, the wicked bend their bow, and they make ready their arrow on a string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold and his eyelids test the sons of men. God is not tempted, but he's saying that his eyelids test the sons of men. His eyes are in every place. And he's saying, okay, this calamity comes on me. That calamity comes on me. I'm watching to see what you're going to do. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence is soon hates. Upon the wicked, he will rain coals, fire, brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness, and his countenance beholds the upright. Hallelujah. Glory for that. That's why we say thank you, God, for being you. Amen. Let's see. Um, any other scriptures with the arrow? Psalms. Psalms 64 3. No, let's read Psalms. Yeah, Psalms 64. Remember in Ezekiel 9, where God said, begin at the sanctuary? What do you say begin at the sanctuary for? Well, 
we were looking at this thing where um, he will say in Ezekiel 9 from verse 4, I believe, where he said, their wickedness, their perversion, it's come to me, and I want an end of it, young and old, okay? And he said, begin at my sanctuary. There are people serving in the sanctuary of God that God is not pleased with. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, ah, but I will say to them, depart from the evil work of iniquity. Psalm 63. We're reading from verse 2. I forgot the scripture. Okay, we're reading from verse, let me find the scripture again. Psalm 63, verse 4, I think, right? Was it? Verse 3. Okay. Right. That's where we're reading from verse Verse 2. <laughs> so I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. That is the two things that are supposed to be in the church. God's power and God's glory. When God's power comes with us, God's glory. And because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Okay? Um, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands up in your name. My soul will be satisfied as with marrow fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And I read the wrong one, but there's never a wrong thing when I do that. It's Psalm 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret. We're reading from verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me in the secret plots of the wicked. Blessed are they who do not stand in the seats of sinners, sit in the seats of mockers and scoffers. Something like go find that scripture just now. Hide me in the secret hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. These are they don't hear. They just want to do evil, 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 evil. They want to just continue, 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 continue. Those who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. Hmm. And they, that they may shoot in secret the blameless. Suddenly, they shoot upon him and do not fear. That's why when we say, Lord, cancel every evil word that we did not hear that was spoken against us. Everything in the room didn't hear. We cancel, we stop those arrows in their tracks and we send them back to the sender. Amen. So they encourage themselves in an evil matter and they talk of laying snares secretly and they say, Who will see that? God says, They said. The Bible reveals God's plan for mankind from beginning to end. When we examine the scriptures, we see that God has a 7,000 year plan for mankind. God sets a pattern in Genesis of seven know days, right. six days for creation and one day of rest. The new millennium is referred to many times as the rest. A day is like a thousand years. What is this? Okay, why is it playing constant? Uh, you know, it's another... Okay, all the videos of games are playing out. Stop. Okay, so, um, what was I saying? Right. So they say that the Lord does not see. But God said in Ezekiel, they said, the Lord is not in this place. The Lord does not see. Then he says, go through the city and destroy, well, kill every old and young. Okay? Not just the old, but the young too. And he says, do not touch those who are sealed with my mark on their foreheads. In other words, they know. Um, um, the other scripture yeah, that's a revelation about spiritual arrows right there, okay? The other scripture is Psalms 45, 5. Amen. 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 Amen.
Okay, we're reading from verse 4, 6. Wow, it's 12 o'clock already. What in the real? And we're reading, okay, open sesame now. Psalms 4, Psalms 5, verse 4 to 6. And in thy majesty ride prosperous, because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. I hear in the spirit where he says, I rise up kings and pass them down. And this is in Daniel verse um, chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. We're looking at chapter two, um, verse 21. Daniel 2, verse 21. And Daniel said, Let the name of the Lord be blessed forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the seasons, epochs. He removes kings and he establishes kings. He rises up kings and casts them down. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. It is he who reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. God is saying, when you see when we talk kings, okay, we know that the beast are kingdoms and revelations and the king, they're the leaders of the, they're the leaders, the authorities. Um, God rules them up for a certain season. And that season, even like um, this guy, what's his name again? Trump, like President Trump, that is there right now. He's there to stir up the nations, to prepare the way for the Antichrist. Because when the nation is stirred up, think about it. Think about it. They're going to be crying out for peace and safety. But there will be none. Because what the thing that they're trusting in is the very thing that's going to destroy them, that's set up to destroy them. And they refuse, for the love of God, they refuse to seek his face in holiness. They refuse to humble themselves. And God has promised, and he said, if my people will humble themselves, didn't he say that? And he's showing that the arrows are, they're, they're really, they're important, you know. They're, they're, they're almost like the fear of God that should be inside of us, piercing us. And it's also the wrath of God that will allow the enemies to surround Israel. It's also um, the words of the enemies that are seeking to pull down the righteous. God is revealing that the, the arrows that he's speaking about, when he says, um, like an arrow in the spirit, and what? And turn back the arrow? It's like, turn back the anger of God. Turn back our enemies from Shut them up. See how that goes? It's like an arrow. This revelation is deep. Are you taking it in? Um, wow. I lost my scriptures. Oh, come on. Okay. Go back. Um, Psalms 45 5. We just read that, right? Um. Okay, remember, he spoke about putting on the armor of Christ. Why? Because the enemies, are, they're like arrows, like fiery darts, you know? What are fiery darts? They're arrows that are set on fire. 
in the days of the Vikings and stuff, you would see they fought with these, they would light the arrows and they would torch the enemy's camp or men themselves would be caught on fire, okay? Um, Psalms 76, 3. Psalms 76. All right. We're reading from verse 1 or 2. Verse 1 is better. But, um, his tabernacle is in Salem. His dwelling place is also in Zion. There he broke the flaming arrows, the shield and the sword, the weapons of war. Silah. I'm going to read that from verse 1. I bet you did it's exalting God right now. And the choir director on stringed instruments, a sound of Asaph, a song. God is known in Judah. His name is great in Israel. His tabernacle is in Salem. His dwelling place also in Zion. There he broke the flaming arrows and the shield and the sword and the weapons of war. Amen. Um, but he actually said, Salem. You are resplendent, more majestic. And the mountains of praying, he goes on to praise God. Amen. So he's showing that the arrows can also be the enemy. So, like an arrow, turn back the arrows, turn back the arrows of the enemy. When we say return to sender, you know exactly what we're saying because we're sending you back. Amen. In our favorite psalm, our favorite, one of the most powerful psalms in the Bible. Psalm 91 said, You will not be afraid of terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. What kind of arrow is he talking about? There are people who have purposed in their hearts to do harm to the righteous. There are people who they you will be fighting, you will be struggling, you will be struggling to to get it through. And the very people sometimes that you think are smiling at you are the ones that the enemy is using to pull you down. If you have, okay, I've learned this stuff right away. The less I see about my life, the greater it goes. And um, because people have less information. Um, sometimes all the smiles that you receive, they're not smiles, they're jealousy. Okay, and while you're praying about a breakthrough or something, awesome to happen in your life someone is speaking against you and you're sending it like arrows you're sending it to me like it's like the enemy speaking then okay in psalms 127 4 like arrows in the hand of a warrior so are the children of one to you that's just a, a play upon the words even like arrows in the hand of a warrior didn't he say he trained our hands for war how do we have to take it down? By violence, okay? We have to take the kingdom of heaven of violence, the violence, the, the violence taken by force. It's not going to be all smooth and cherry. No. God is saying, I trained your hands for war. You have the power. You have the authority. Use it. Okay? Um... Okay, and this is what I was talking about just now, about people pulling it down. In Proverbs 28, 18, reading from verse 17. Verse 
listen to this. Thus says the Lord. Amen. Not Carrie. Proverbs 25, verse 17 to 19. Thus says the Lord God. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house. Least he gets tired of you and hates you. Least he be wary of you and hates you. A man that bears false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Confidence is in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. It's pain. Okay? So, you know this thing called gossip? That people love to do, they love to gossip. God hates it. And he says, even sometimes, you might think someone's rejoicing for you. And you might say, well, sometimes during the day I just feel this over them and heaviness over them. I don't, I can't explain. I get really, really tired or put down. I just feel so um, discouraged. And guess what? You have shared something in your life that you was not, you were not supposed to share with someone you're not supposed to share it with. And that person is not pulling you down. They're praying against you. They're talking about you. They're, they're gossiping about you and it happens even in the body of Christ it's a sad sick thing it is sick God says touch on his anointed and do his prophets no harm if you are under the blood of Jesus and you are filled with the Holy Spirit guess what you are you are the anointed of the Lord put on the armor of Christ we're not automatically wearing it. we got to put it on. Declare it. Um, in Jeremiah 9, reading from verse 7. I don't think I'm going to finish this tonight anyway. We're still on the first verse, and this is sharp. This arrow thing is going deep. Jeremiah 9, verse 7 to 9. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I'll refine them, and I'll try them. For how shall I deal with the Jupiter of my people? Their tongue is like an arrow shut out. It seeks deceit. One speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but his heart lies in wait. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? That's why when Jesus came and he said, um, You know the law of Moses is holy. You know what the prophet said is good. Now I'll tell you something. I've not only come to fulfill that law, but I've come to amplify it. No longer are you to just do the act. But if you think of the act, then you commit murder in your heart. Okay, God does not want us to be murderers. Sorry. God is saying a, a neighbor will laugh with us. They will, a friend, even someone who appears like a friend will laugh with us. He will um he or she will they will they will let us confide in them. Okay, but Satan is about to use that that confidentiality that we have. Um if we don't use discernment, we have to test the spirits and sift. You gotta see who is for you and who is against you. God is saying there are arrows flying in the spirit and you've got to know you got to discern when to shut them down. Um, in Psalms 38, 2, For your arrows have sunk deep inside of me, and your hand is pressed down upon me. This is conviction of the Holy Spirit. This is him searing your conscience from sin. You want to flee from sin. The fearful Lord is upon you. Job 34, 6, remember we just read, Should, should I lie concerning my right? 
my wound is incurable, though am I without transgression. Lamentations 3, verse 12, and he bent his bow, and he set me like a target for the arrow, and he made the arrows of his quiver to enter into my inward hearts. What does that mean? Your inward parts, the deepest parts of you. The parts you thought were not penetrable, that um, uh, were not permeable, impermeable. Permeable or impermeable? Okay, we're not penetratable. Is that a word, penetrable? The parts that you thought could, nobody could ever get to. That's an upbringing in a place where you surrender. I'll bring you into a place that you, the fear of the Lord, begins to descend upon you. Inside here, and inside here first. Here, you're going to acknowledge me. And here, you're going to trust me. But for me to do it here and here, I gotta fill it up. I gotta give you the word. I gotta, I gotta let you know what I'm about to do in a way that you don't know, so that when the revolution comes, it's crazy big, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know that I can reach the innermost, the innermost parts of you, but you have to be willing to let me in. So I'm gonna be revealing myself to you in simple ways in beautiful ways, in prophecy, in revelation, in my word, through situations where you should have fallen down flat on your face and going to bring you up. You might have, what does the Bible say about that? You might have stumbled in front, but you did not fall. Because God is upholding us with his righteous hand. Amen. Um, there's so many things like arrows. Amen. In Psalm 64, 7, but God will shoot at them with an arrow, and suddenly they will be wounded. He's going to bring the enemies against Israel. Why? Because they are supposed to be shining his glory forth, so that the nations of the earth will be exalted. And they haven't done it. And there is chaos in the world. Take a look around. So God says he's going to bring the enemy to what's him. And they're going to shoot them with an arrow. And they're going to feel it. Have you ever been shot with something? I've seen movies with it. And the arrow looks pretty painful because it's metal, okay? And a flaming arrow? Wow. That's burn and pierce. It's crazy bad. So God is going to... He says... Um, Me to go in Psalms 83 right now. And guess who's talking about it? The same guy that we're reading about, Esau. Let's read King James Version. Okay, let's see. Keep not thy silence, O Lord. Hold not thy peace. Be not still, O God. Oh, and any make a turmoil, and they that hate thee listen. People and consulted the hidden ones. What does God say? Your enemies are speaking from you when you do not know this is what you're doing. Even to Israel. And guess what? The rebellion of Israel is now giving the enemy a foothold or a gate. So they take, they take them, they've taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They've said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel will be no more in remembrance. For they've consulted together with one consent. There are confederates against thee. Tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. These are all uncircumcised, all right? Acer, which is also the Arab nations around them, 
is joined with them. They have opened the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kisum, which perished at Endo, and they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zaid, yea, all their princes at Deba and Zemuna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the, the house of God in possession. Remember when they raided the temple and they took everything that belonged to them? They, they desecrated the temple, right? Um, that, is it Solomon that made it? For God? Um, oh my God, make them like a wheel. As stubble before the wind, as what? As stubble. As the fire burneth a wood, and as a flame sets the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storms. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know you, that that men may know that thou, whose name is Jehovah, art the Most High over all the earth. Selah. So God is saying, all of these things are happening for a reason, and it's to bring Israel back, come back to Israel. God is saying that the arrows, even, okay, the ones that that the enemy are sending. He's a, he's parading it because your your rebellion creates a gate, and if your rebellion creates a gate, guess who's coming in? Guess whose favorite path that is? The unemployed cherub Satan. Okay, he hates um, righteousness. He hates. He hates holiness, but he loves sin, he loves unrighteousness, he loves wickedness. And God is saying he will use that as a gate, and he will wait for it to be a gate. And when you're all puffed up in pride and you refuse to turn to God as your helper, when you, return, when you refuse to turn to God as your maker, then the enemy will be brought in. But guess what? As you see the enemy being brought in, you will, be, you will come to a point of fear of the Lord. The fear of the enemy will bring you to the fear of the Lord. Those arrows that the enemy was sending, listen to this, the arrows that the enemy was sending, okay? Burakanda Shedekeya Rakabaha the, enem the enemy's arrows that will be sent to destroy you, God is going to make those arrows into something good. He says, I am the Lord. I will take what is meant for evil and turn it around for good. Can we find a scripture right now? The Holy Spirit. Um, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Okay, so God is saying that while that finds him, but I try to use for your destruction. If my people will humble themselves, turn from the things and seek my peace. Then I will give from heaven and heal their last verse that scripture will find it just now. He's saying that the enemy's arrows are going to be used to, for his arrows, God's arrows, to take place in life here. It's going to bring the fear of the Lord upon you. It's going to bring you to the knowledge and to the wisdom. It's going to open eyes. I want that scripture, you know? 
Galatians 50, verse 22. And it says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. Hallelujah. The Lord is in every place. Hallelujah. The Lord is making himself known. He says that the thing that the enemy has tried to use against his people, even those who are backslidden, he said, return to me, O backsliding daughter. He says, come. the enemy intended to use for evil, God is turning it around for good. Genesis 50 verse 19 to 21. Genesis, come on, the first book in the book. Genesis 50. Please, thank you very much. Genesis 50. Oh, I see his. That's the arrows, that's the revelation for the arrow scripture right there. Um, Genesis 50, reading from verse 19 to 21. And it says, Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. For, oh, wait, sorry, what? Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am a high. In the place of God, twenty. For you, who meant evil, but God meant it for good. About as to this day, these many people. And verse twenty-one. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. All right. So, God is saying he'll use the enemy's arrows, okay? Because you, you let them in. You brought rebuke on yourself. That's okay. God says the enemy is looking to hurt. Even his righteous. You know, you don't even have to sin. The enemy is hurting the righteous. But what the enemy is using for bad, for evil, God is going to turn it around for good. Those arrows that were meant to destroy and to hurt and to hinder, God is going to use it to instill the fear of the Lord upon you that you look upon Him alone as your Redeemer. You look upon Him alone as Savior. You look upon Him alone as Almighty God. See how that works? Because He is God who works all things for righteousness. It robots reading eight twenty eight first. We're reading from verse seven to twenty. For he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit, but the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God works all things for good together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29 of Romans 8, For God foreknew, he also predestined 
to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. I'll read it. See, you want you to have the fear of the Lord in you. If you have the fear of the Lord in you, then you're going to have God in you. And if you have God in you, you're going to be loyal. You're going to want to be led by His Spirit. Okay. So, Philippians 2, 13. Reading from verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence. Remember what we were talking about before? About the donkey and the ox not having something to eat. Therefore, my beloved, just like you always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and tremble. Who work on you to will and to act on behalf of his good pleasure. Do everything without complaining or arguing. I love that. Love it. He took me to the bride. He says, my disciples don't have to fast when I'm there with them. They'll fast when I'm not there with them, when I'm taken away from them, when I go, when I leave them, okay? In Hebrews, we're reading chapter 6 from verse 9 to 11. Even though we speak like this, beloved, we are convinced of better things than faith, of things that come from salvation. God is not unjust. He's righteous. Amen? He's just and righteous. Judge. He will not forget your work and the love you've shown him for his name. As you've ministered to the saints and continue to do so, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end, that your hope may be fully assured. Amen? So, God is bringing this to a close. And he says, the arrows that the enemies make for evil, he's going to use it to instill the fear of the Lord in you, not just but to see that he is God. When he says, be still and know I am, you really have to be still and know I am. He's going to use the arrows of affliction um, by the enemy, even for the wicked. God desires no soul to perish, but all to come unto repentance. He's going to use it for them too. And he's saying like the donkey that when it has no grass, it breaks. Amen? Like the disciples of God, when the bridegroom is not with them, they fast. You want to be filled up. You want to be. You want to be fed. Okay. So God is He's just confirming His words. And my sleepiness is upon me now. Uh, see, as soon as I hit the the revelation, the devil's a liar. Amen. So God wants. Um, Even his arrows, he wants us to resist the devil and he will flee to seek for the wicked to come apart from the wicked, come out of them, my people. He keeps going, come out of them. Turn back the arrows. We haven't even looked at that one yet. Ezekiel 39.3 Reading from verse 2 to verse 4 And I will turn you around and drive you on and take you up from the remote parts of the north and bring you against the mountains of 
Asia, from the North, China, North Korea, Russia. And this is prophecy, okay? Um, I will strike your bow from your left hand, even against the United States. I will strike your bow from your left hand and dash down your arrows from your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel, and you and all your troops and the people who are with you. I will give you as food for every kind of predatory bird and beast of the field. God will surely turn back the arrows. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 21, 4, reading from verse 3 to 5. I need to get a half an hour sleep at least right now. Then Jeremiah said to them, You shall see to Zedekiah as follows. Thus says the Lord, of, the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am about to turn back the weapons of war which are in your hands, which you have been warring against the king of Babylon and the child of Venus. Who are beseeching you outside the wall, and I will guide them to the center of the city. I myself will war against you with an outstretched hand and a mighty arm, even in anger, wrath, and great indignation. God says, Do not partake of Babylon, get out. I will also strike down the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast, and they will die of a great pestilence. God is saying, We do not want to partake of the portion, your cup is poured. Full, not parts of it. Her cup is for full, and she will surely drink of the dregs. Okay, and if you partake with her, then guess what? If you partake in sin, you're gonna partake of the cup. Okay, and afterwards, declare the Lord, I will give Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and the people, even those who survive in the city, from the pestilence, the sword, and the famine, to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Of Babylon, and of those who seek their eyes, and he'll strike them down with the edge of the sword, and you will not spare them and have pity or compassion. Captivity. And you shall say this to the people Thus says the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death, and you will know it. Amen. It's like when the, the angel was passing over Egypt and he said, put the lamb's blood on the, the mantle of the door on the two posts and do not come out of your house. For at midnight I will force the angel of death to pass. At midnight when the groom is passing, the groom passing through the city and all those who do not have the blood of the lamb upon their mantle is going to die. He who dwells in the city will die by sword and famine and by pestilence. But he who goes out and falls away, the Chaldeans who are besieging you will live. And he will have his own life as booty. Right? For I set my face against the city to harm, and of the good, declares the Lord. And it will be given to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will burn it with fire. That is the ultimate punishment for sin, and it's fire. And God keeps saying, my fire is kindled. I came to bring a fire on this earth, and how I wish it was kindled already. Ah, somebody say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, ignite within me. Holy Spirit, a living God, burn within me of fire. A passion for God's word, God's truth, God's love, God's plan, God, everything that's God's. Amen. Um, I'm going to stop here just with this one verse for now, and then I'm going to come. I'm going to end it up. What's not functional, therefore. Um, this is the bad thing about working during the day and I hate it. Oh. Get so tired coming to give revelation. Um, Psalms 54, 57 4. My soul is among lions, and I must lie among those who breathe forth fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are like spears and arrows, 
and a tongue of sharp sweet. God's arrow is like the blue as well. God's arrow can be like the it is the fire of the Holy Spirit burning within us. Um, the arrow of the enemy is the weakness that God hates. I am. And it says, evil will perish in his presence. Evil will perish in his presence. And when he said the Spirit, like an arrow, you can see the revelation. Wow, that was it's his arrow. He says he's about to use what is meant for evil and turn it on for good. But if my people. Okay, let's just end it here with this one. That is Second Chronicles 14. 7.14, and it says, If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. If you want to go back into Ezekiel 9 now, the last verse. There's not many verses in Ezekiel 9. He was just about 12. Okay. And behold, the man which clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded. There are angels waiting to minister. Um, they're waiting to. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, there are angels waiting to help, angels waiting to strengthen, angels waiting to, to just be there. They are servants, okay? They're servants of God, just like we are, and they're helping us. So God is saying, um, okay, from verse 8, which is the very scripture he gave me after Deuteronomy 32, Ezekiel 9, verse 8, And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, I was left, that I fell upon my face, and I cried, and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the remnants of Israel in thy pouring out of fury upon Jerusalem? And God is saying, There is one righteous man who cried out, Will you destroy all the rest? Will you destroy 50 righteous? Will you destroy a city if 50 righteous was in the city? And then he came down to 10. Okay, and um, that was Abraham. So God is saying the prayer of a righteous man will be much. And um, he's calling even now those in faith to rise up and pray that iniquities passed away, that sins passed away, that. Um, Evil is passed away. Just pray against it. God is going to hear. Seek his face. When you seek his face, you're in his presence. The glory is falling. I was going to speak to you. Amen? Um, so, arrows of the enemy that was used for evil to destroy, to bring to an end. Guess what? God said he's going to turn it around and make it for his good, his righteousness, because he works all things for righteousness. And he has a big plan in store. Amen. So in Jesus' name, I hope this word bless you. When I have a nap, I need a nap. It's 12.37. At least 20 minutes, please. Um, I'll come back and I'll get more. I will continue. Okay?
So this one is just about the arrow, and it's a beautiful thing about the arrow because the arrow actually brings hunger. The arrow of the Lord brings hunger. The arrow of the enemy provokes hunger of the Lord. Like it provokes us to be hungry for His presence, to be hungry and know that He is the arrow, to uh, oh, <laughs> a bit of fall, to to know that he is God and be still and know that our enemies will be cast from us. That is not a might or me. That is a definite yes. Okay? But God wants us to come to him for that to happen. And as we said, if my people will humble themselves and pray, then let the arrows do their work. Okay? Because the arrow of God surely prevails. He said, I'm able to pierce your insides, your uttermost inside hearts and that's your heart that's your mind your brain your spirit uh your soul okay beloved i hope you're blessed by this word i gotta go in jesus name okay god bless you i love you jesus loves you i need to sleep right now i'm gonna go sleep um I'm just going to nap and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do more scripture. Okay? I hope you're blessed by this word. In Jesus' name. Amen.